hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty, and if I've done my job properly, you're watching me in black and white right now. This can only mean one thing. Actually, it could mean a lot of things, but what this actually means is that this is episode 45 of my pick series and today I am collabing with someone new it is the beautiful Naomi so if you want to find out exactly which photo is our inspiration this month, or this episode? Which palette or palettes are used? And most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Then my friend, do you have the best seat in the house? As I have said for some time, and oft hear echoed on less imaginative channels. But they haven't got a Sammy the Sloth straw to accompany them. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the intro that this is the latest instalment of my pick series. Um, and today I have someone completely new to the channel. We have the beautiful Naomi from Beauty Dreams by Naomi. I've actually got her page up here at the moment. Um, she has a lot of of different films. Sorry, the fan needs to be on. It's ridiculously hot in my kitchen. It's not even seven o'clock in the morning yet. Um, she's got a lot of different things on her channel. She's got Shop My Stash, uh, Project Pan, Making Her Own Everyday Palette, First Time Trying a Cut Crease, um, Palette Reviews, Boxy Charm Unboxings, um, Highlighter collection, get ready with me, blush collection. The girl's got a fair amount of, of uh, films on there. And at the moment, she's on 94 subscribers. Now, I discovered her through my lovely friend Laura from Gold Star Work. She did a collab with her. Uh, flipped across, watched, I think, one film of Naomi's and was like, yeah, I like this girl, I like her style, and just shot her a message saying, hi, do you fancy collabing? Um, I think she was quite shocked, <laughs> because obviously she'd not heard from me before, and here I was, brand new subscriber, saying, do you want to collab? But she was up for it, which is awesome. Um, so, I, as I always do with my pick challenges, I always give the person that I'm collabing with the option of choosing the photo first and she said no 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 you choose so if that's the case I tend to fire over a few photos to them and they can choose whichever one calls to them and if none of them call to them well then I'll send them some more I've got a folder with about 200 images in it that every time I see an image and I think that could be a good one I just copy it straight into that folder now the one she's chosen is just I love it. It, it. I read a lot of Enid Blyton as a child. So you know, folk of the faraway tree, where Moonface and Slinky and 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 Dame Washalot and everybody and <laughs> Mr. Wassy's name or Wassy's face, where every branch had a different fruit growing on it, and then when you got to the top, there was a ladder and a cloud. And there was a different land in the cloud and it changed randomly. The bell rang, you had to get out otherwise you were stuck in that land. 
till it came back. Folk of the Faraway Tree, if you've not read it, just trust me, even as an adult I enjoy reading that to my god, or enjoyed reading that to my god, because they're all a bit old for it now. Well, apart from the youngest one, who's not quite old enough for it. I'm Bletherin. Welcome to my channel. Uh, she has chosen this photo, which is why I said it reminds me of that. It's, I could picture this being one of the lands at the top of the faraway tree. Um, and when you look at it initially, you see the colours. You see green and yellow and orange and blues and purples and pinks. And you think, oh, good, I can, you know, I don't think there's any colour that I can't use. Because there's black and there's brown and there's white. And, but then you start looking a little bit closely and I'm going to put some little blow-ups over this side of different parts of the picture because the more you look at it the more you see so we've got this gorgeous pretty bird sitting on a plant of some variety kind of looks like a Michaelmas daisy but Michaelmas daisies are not that colour and then next another bunch of the same flower we have a butterfly people who know me know how good it is that I can now picture a butterfly because I had a massive phobia of butterflies and moths still don't like moths but I'm, I managed to crack the butterfly one <sighs> um, then you've got this curious looking frog with an orange eye next to something that looks like a cross between a Venus flytrap and an octopus and an octopus's garden by the sea mm. then you've got these two spiny pink things that look like they should be anemones or some kind of spiny sea creature sitting on more of those weird Michaelmas type daisy things clearly having a chat and then there's two more of them near what could be forget-me-nots. I'm not entirely sure the plants are meant to actually resemble anything current, but they, they remind me of forget-me-nots. Then you've got like these, these tree nymphs or wood nymphs, similar to um, sprites or... Um, yeah, like a wood nymph. Or Groot for the younger amongst us and they're looking at another butterfly which looks to have some kind of weird creature riding upon it could be, be part of the butterfly not entirely sure uh, and then you, you have this <laughs> which looks like it should be something out of Fraggle Rock or the Muppets um, next to another bizarre plant very green with pink arms and legs so he's obviously been out in the sun without any sun cream on and he's got burned then you got this I don't know frog like pink creature with glowing eyes up a tree tree frog? I don't know um, and then if you look at this blow up of the castle this to me the main this is this to me just if I had to choose one section of the picture to sum it up this would be it because of all the colours in the background. So in that you can see green and orange and blue and a lilac and a pink and a yellow and deeper purple and deeper green. So I've swatched a few of the shades out of my Hasina palette. Hopefully, maybe if I come back a bit, it won't blow them out quite so much. So I've got all mattes across the top here, and then a gold and a deep, like um, black currant shimmer at the bottom. And these are, I think, the colours that are calling to me the most from that picture. And they are all from Hasina. I finally managed to get hold of one. Um, Obviously, everybody knows Hasina too is my favourite, favourite of all palettes, even the Jeffrey palettes. Um, <clears throat> can't wait to see what Salma from Blush Tribe 
will be doing for her next adventure because she is starting a new company once Blush Tribe has closed uh, and apparently my discount code will still work with the new company. Obviously I'm going to want to try whatever the new products are before I promote that code to you for the new company. Um, but I can't see any reason why quality would drop. But I don't know whether she's going to be doing makeup. She could be moving into skincare, nail care, hair care. Who knows? Only she knows right now. Um, but yeah, so this one, I've been looking for this for quite a while. Now, obviously, I've got Layla, which is a combination of... Layla was the replacement for Hasina because it pulled favourite shades from different palettes to create a new rainbow palette but I've been looking for the Hasina to help nearly complete my collection um, so this is the palette I'm going to be concentrating on today now I'm going to take these swatches off the back of my hand because otherwise knowing me I'll end up wiping them all over my face in areas that I don't want them to be so, this is still a teaching channel. Uh, as such, I go at a speed that beginners and people in chronic pain can keep up with me. If this is going to be too slow for you and you just want to see the application of the eyeshadow, there's a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it. Right, uh, as part of my my educational teaching channel. Uh, I am going to include my usual clip about how to tell the difference between deep set and hooded lids. They have very similar issues in terms of how eyeshadow wears through the day, but the workarounds to get the best look from your shadows are actually different. And I know so many people that say, oh, I've got hooded lids. And I'm like, no, you've actually got deep set eyes. Now, for those who've not been here before, um, I zoom right in tight to my eyes. So even if you're on quite a small phone screen, you're still going to be able to see what's going on. So don't jump and scream and drop your phone or your tablet or whatever you're watching me on um, when the clip starts, because I will be all up in your face. And um, <clears throat> yeah, up close and personal, shall we say. Right, that being said, here's your clip. I'll see you at the other end when I apply some of this to these. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. 
and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I recently bought a one of these eye care box, eye shadow box set type thing. <sighs> Let me unplug my brain and start again. I recently bought an eye brush set from Voldemorphy. I'm going to start off with this one which is very very similar to their 506 but has a much longer and thinner handle. Now I always hold the brush right at the very end so that I put as little pressure on as possible. These are stick-on nails I have not been to the salon. I wish Right, I think I'm going to start with Jamelia, which is the bright green. A reasonable amount of kick up in pan. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. Doesn't worry me, um, I just tap off over the pan to catch the fallout and then I'll just use the fallout as I build the colour up. Uh, I'd much rather build colour up slowly than have it suddenly appear and have the issue of blending it out. And at least when you get a kick up, you know you get your product on your brush. Right. As always, we're going to do the Viennese Waltz of blending. So that's natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns when we come back out. The reason we do this, the reason I do this, is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, and that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. So if I was to just go in with windscreen wiper, the skin folds over on itself and you get dead giveaway tiger stripe or barcoding. By doing circles, you minimise that because you're very gently moving the skin around, hence why we hold our brush at the end. 
I'm going to start down near my natural crease and just start building this up. So as I said, I discovered Naomi when she did a collab with Laura, who regular viewers will know I've collabed with a number of times now. Um, so obviously I've not watched Naomi for long but I really really like her style she's very very chill very relaxed very calming uh, lovely voice again similar to Laura very relaxing voice um, and She's not as deeply into colour as I am because when she was making her everyday palette, for me, my everyday palette would have things like um, khaki and olive greens and mustards in, whereas her everyday palette was, was more of a traditional everyday palette. So it had your taupes and your greys and your, you know, warm brown, cool brown, etc. Now, when you're doing your eyes, always sit back and check that you're getting about the same shape. Oh, sorry, hiccups. I'm having hiccups so often recently. The, um, although my meds haven't changed, sometimes the provider of the med changes, so like the manufacturer of my codeine will change from one month to the next and I think that's what's happening because ever since I've been on this particular brand of codeine I'm getting hiccups a lot. Could be coincidence, could just be that I'm going through a hiccupy phase. But yeah, I always sit back and, and sort of relax my brows because I don't walk around like that all day. <laughs> Not unless you've had really bad Botox. Um, and I just like to check that I've got about the same shape going on both sides because I don't photoshop my results I don't use any filtering unless it's a, a very obvious snapchat filter you know if I've got horns and elliptical pupils then you know you can be pretty sure there's a filter on it but apart from that I don't as a rule use any filters the most I'll do is um, if a colour's not showing up properly in the photos because it's overcast like it is at the moment then I'll just brighten it up you know play with the contrast a bit just so that the colours are accurate but I don't use any skin smoothing I don't know how to use the skin smoothing stuff to be honest but I'm just cleaning this brush off on a washcloth I used to use a colour switch to change colours on brushes but I found they're really harsh on the bristles especially natural hair brushes I mean this is synthetic obviously um, but yeah, don't use colour switches if you like your brushes, basically. Right, I think I might stick, I have got my Voldemorphy M139 here. But I think for the minute I'm going to stick to this smaller one. Because I kind of want, I want to put quite a few colours on today. So obviously the smaller the head of the brush, the better. Because whatever size the head of the brush is, that's how far it will blend it out. Okay, so if you've got a brush like this, it's going to blend it out much further than this one. Okie dokie. Um, I think I'm going to go into Nazia, which is the red, uh, the blue, sorry. build that up just on the very outer edge here. Now when you're blending two colours together start off by blending kind of half on your original colour and half on your skin. Remember you can always go back in and build the green up if it blends away too much. But by doing this you are actually making sure that you get a more seamless blend. 
which obviously is what I'm looking for. I do apologise if I wiggle a lot today, I'm in an awful lot of pain. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it was borderline not being able to film pain. Um, but I'm kind of grimacing my way through at the moment. Now you know I love colourful looks and I love the fact that she's chosen a more colourful picture to start with. I was quite expecting her to go for um, maybe an easier, well I suppose this is an easy option because there's pretty much, you can use every colour under the spectrum because there's there's pretty much every single colour in that picture. But um, as usual, this, this is the usual blush tribe quality, so pigmented, blendable, love it. Um, she doesn't have much left on her website now at all, um, but you may be able to pick some up from reseller sites like Depop eBay, Facebook, etc. Um, her sister's still going with Certify and obviously that's sold at Beauty Bay. So you can actually get that a bit easier if you're overseas. And I do like the Certify quality. It's a different type of, of uh, pigment to Blush Tribe. Blush Tribe tends to be um, softer and is more likely when you're blending two colours together because it's so softly milled you're more likely to get the first colour slightly blending away and needing building back up again but that's not a bad thing it just shows you the blendability of the shade okay yeah when it's an overcast day like this I like to go a little bit nuts with the colour as regular viewers will no doubt know, if you're new here, I do occasionally do um, softer looks, but my choice is colour, basically. Um, do I want to go into... Let me have another look at my pick chart. What a picture, what a photograph. Yes, yeah, so it's got a deep pink, but it hasn't really got a red. So I think I might go into the deep pink next, which is Fatima. usually with a Morphe brush, there's a couple of loose bristles, but you get that a lot of times with new brushes. So I'm going to go in with this deep pink next and just add this here. If you're going to be blending colours together it does really help to know colour theory, because obviously I know I'm going to get purple here, and I know if I'm not careful I'm going to get brown here, or it could go muddy, mixing pink and green, but because I know that these blend super easily, I'm not overly worried. If this was a, a, a palette where I didn't know the formula, I would probably not put a pink next to a green, but because I know how well the Blush Tribe formula blends, I'm not overly worried because I know it's going to blend together well enough there without needing to be over blended and going muddy. You can see a smaller brush does give you more control. Mm. 
in terms of placing shadows. I love playing with colour. But yeah, I believe Naomi's Canadian. I'm sure she's Canadian. Um, and once I've finished doing my look, I need you to pop over and check her out and say hi. Can't wait to see what she does with this, see which colours call to her. The whole point of this pick series is that there's basically two rules. You can own oh sorry, I need to stretch, sorry. You can only use colours that are in the photo. So like I couldn't use a red because there isn't a red in there. Um, but you don't have to use all the colours. So I could have just stuck to two or three colours. But you know me, any chance to do a riot of colour. Plus it's June, it's pride season, colourful looks are in. Right, I'm going to go into Jehan, which is the orange. And I'm going to pop that. Look at that for pigment. Can you see why I was devastated when she said she was closing her books? You don't normally get this amount of pigment this quickly from a pressed pigment. You do from a loose pigment, but normally for a pressed pigment you have to work a little bit harder than this. As you can see, this is just like, hello, you wanted some pigment? Here I am. Good morning. I used to be one of those annoying people that was like, the minute my feet, well I still am the minute my feet hits the floor I'm awake. And I uh, used to work for the Royal British Legion and we did pilgrimages and battlefield tours worldwide for veterans and their families and school kids and you know, historical societies and army cadets and all kinds of people. Um, And I was always the person that was sort of last to bed because if you've got people from the tour still up in the bar at night, member of staff still has to be awake there with them in case there's any problem. So that was usually me. So I was normally the last one to bed at about, you know, two, three, four in the morning. And I'd still be up at, you know, half seven the next morning. Morning! Which used to astound a lot of the, uh, some of the older boys there. A couple of the tour guides that were... Uh, ...ex-army and they were like, how could you put away the amount you put away last night? and not be hung over this morning. Mm -hmm. well, no. Good luck I suppose. Good genetics. Now with this eye, because of the super deep creasing, can you see what I mean about the barcoding just there? I do have to very gently stretch this lid because otherwise what happens is the, the, um, the pigment builds up in those creases but it builds up loosely and then throughout the day it sort of cascades down and gets into my eye. It gets very, very painful. Um, but when I come to do the mobile lid on that eye I will show you the safest way to stretch your lid out if you have similar issues to me where you've already got damage to your eyelid. That was where the ophthalmic hospital pulled it around when I was five years old. And I tend to get more fallout this side as well because this eye moves more. Right. 
I don't want to go into Hasna, which is a lavendery lilac, or do I want to go into Zena, which is a pink? I think I'm going to go into Hasna and try that one, the lilac. Or lavender. Oh, no, it's not really lavender, it hasn't got a grey undertone. Lilac. That colour. <laughs> As I said, you don't have to be quite as right as with colour as me. I mean, you could just pull out maybe the greens and yellows from the painting, or the pinks and lilacs together would look good, or orange and yellow, orange and pink. Because that's the whole point of this, you don't have to use all the colours. You just can't add colours in that aren't there. Oh, I feel like a bird of paradise. Were you wafted in on the wings of paradise? My love, no, no. Who remembers that advert for Fry's Turkish Delight, full of Eastern promise? Starring the rain chase of all people. Again, I just keep sitting back and checking that both eyes look the same. And this is absolutely a colour that could work for, you know, or a look that could work for pride. Because um, obviously I'm going to pop some orange on the lid, which would be your yellow. Obviously this is a slightly more pastel colour, so it just needs a little bit more building up. But obviously, Blush Tribe, it's not a black owned makeup brand. Um, Salma's, I think she's Middle Eastern, I think. Um, so I know that her pigments are designed to be used on skin with significantly more melanin than I am blessed with. Yeah, I like that. It's fair to say, I like that a lot. Nice brush on the back, and I'm going to grab one of my Jeffrey Voldemorphy lip brushes. I call them Voldemorphy because um, Makeup for Lost Time calls them that, and it makes me chuckle. So, because I last used this with quite a dark colour, just giving it, although I wipe it off on the, um, hmm, washcloth, <coughs> before I put them away, I do like to just, just go over them again and just make sure they're absolutely as, as clean as possible in between uses. Obviously I wash them every week, but the reason I like using this brush is because where it's tapered to a point, it's great for getting down into that inner corner. Um, I'm going to use my Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray to wet the pigment after I've applied it to the brush. 
never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you will kill it. And I'm going to go into Layla, which is the gold. Layla, you got me on my knees, Layla. Okay. You don't have to use a fixing spray, you can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badesco or Fix Plus. Dry your, your ferrule off though by tucking it into your knuckles and spinning. Um, you can use a priming spray, a setting spray. You can even save an empty bottle and just fill it with tap water each day to use. I tend to spray all shimmers regardless of brand. Uh, mainly because it helps prevent a lot of the fallout that you'll see from shimmers as a rule and also because it does help give them that pop I'm going to pull that across about two thirds of the eye like so. Right, now as I was saying with this side I have to do it slightly differently. I'm just going to dry that brush off and pick up more pigment. If you have gone into a pigment with a wet brush I do have a mini tutorial showing you how to get rid of hard pan but just because I've given you a tutorial on how to get rid of it doesn't mean I'm encouraging you to do it because eventually it will hard pan through the whole thing. Right, if I use my nail you can see it's about the width of the nail that I have the crease in. So I'll do the same width again of good, you know, good eyelid and then put my finger on. And then I'm only stretching the eyelid out as far as it takes flatten the crease and I'm going to apply this and then gently let go again and then just do the rest of the lid in the same way that I did the other one so you can see I only stretched it out far enough to straighten the crease. I didn't pull it right out to my ear roll. And I didn't just let go and let it slap back. I gently let it fold back in on itself. I think I've gone a little bit further along on that eye than I did on this one. So let's just add a wee bit more to this side. So this is the beauty of makeup, it's your face, you paint it how you want to. And if you don't like it when it's done, well, take it off and do something different. It's not permanent. Use it as well, because I have no idea if I had to choose one eyeshadow look to last me for the rest of the time, I'm not sure I could. And now I'm going to go into Sumi. Samira, Samira, probably butchering that, sorry, which is the deep sort of black currenty colour, work the pigment, dry the ferrule, and I'm just going to pop this onto the outer edge of the lid and then lightly drag where the two colours meet to blend. And the same thing this side. Add the black current. I 
and then light the drag using the tip of the bristles to just blend those two together. How pretty is that? Right, my beauties, I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation and bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I am going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again but for you my darlings there's going to be no delay at all you're going to see me instantly so uh, hello hello I am back I'm not sure if you can see but I've actually got a duochrome eyeliner on it's one of the new revolution double x this is the magnetics duochrome in shade energy um, if i just pop it on the back of my hand because you can probably see it a little bit easier there it's a sort of olive green with a light gold shift to it almost I kind of I wanted the wing to be there but I didn't want it to overpower the look I just want it to sort of catch the light every now and again you're gonna spot it that was the plan anyway right my brows, I did my usual soap brows where I used the Revolution soap brow kit, brushed them through and then just used a brow brush in Samira to brush through. Now you don't have to use the brow kit, you can just use the spoolie on the other end of the brow brush and an ordinary bar of soap. I don't wet the soap, I leave it dry. This serves a dual purpose, it's a little bit sticky then when you put it on, which means the coloured pigment that you then apply to it, be it eyeshadow or liquid liner or blush or whatever you're going to use to colour your eyebrows in with, um, it actually sticks to the soap but then it sets the soap so it helps to hold your, your brows in that shape all day right I'm going to use my flat top brush and go into Jamila which is the green I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line I can't as a rule put anything in my waterline or my tight line um, my eyes end up streaming. I've always had very watery eyes. It's something that women in my family suffer with. Um, add to that that one of my side effects from fibro is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever. And if I put anything in my waterline, it's like Niagara Falls. My body's like. This is not meant to be here. Get away, you foul thing. Get away. I think I've lost the plot, folks. Right. Some people would say I never had the plot in the first place. Um, I'm actually going to dip into um, I'm going to dip into Zayna which is the lighter pink that I've not used yet and just use that to very lightly buff along the lower lash line. Now the brush that I'm using is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette flat topped and chunky but you can use any kind of blender brush smudger brush I mean, to a certain extent you can even use those 
god awful sponge tipped things that we normally end up throwing away but are quite useful for applying glitter so hang on to them there you do have to be careful when you're putting pink on your lower lash line that you don't end up looking like you've got pink eye um, which is why I tend to combine it with a deeper colour just so that it's obvious that yes this is actually meant to be here okay highlight have I got any new highlights I can play with no so I will grab oh, I think I'll get my my lethal cosmetics wavelength highlighter in the shade scatter which is this gorgeous sort of lavender shift white base lavender pinky shift this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay over 10 years ago now great for the underbrow highlight though and yes even when you take colour up to your brow like I have there you can still pop an underbrow highlight on and then in a corner and I like to pull mine under the tear duct just blend it in fade it into the colours under the eye I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely especially where I can't put anything in my waterline right my beauties I'm going to pause you for one last time I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on put some mascara on choose something for the lips and I'll be back with my finished look for you once again instant. I am back. I used my Essence Mascara, the Lash Paradise with the Orange Lid. Finally managed to get hold of a Shane Glossin, which is the clear gloss from Jeffrey. Because um, I just thought, do you know what? I just think a nice bit of clear gloss just finishes off the look really nicely without detracting from the eyes at all. And obviously I've got the same highlighter on. So, here's the picture. How do you think I've done? If you were collabing with me, which colours do you see first? Which colours would you be drawn to using? Would you have gone as wild as me or would you have toned it down a little bit? I'm guessing most of you would have toned it down a little bit. Although I can think of a few people that may have gone a little bit wilder than me. Uh, if you're one of my 4F beauties, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are oh, still unsubscribing you. But they're leaving my films in your news feed so it's not obvious you've been unsubscribed, which is super rude of them. Uh, once you've done that, a cheeky like, a little bit of a comment, maybe even a share if you could manage it, would be delightful and super appreciated uh, because it all helps towards the algorithm and getting my films pushed out so other people can see it. And once you have done all that, I'm going to need you to go visit the lovely Naomi and check out her film see exactly which colours she was drawn to, which palette or palettes she uses and of course don't forget to do all those good YouTube things over there give her a like, give her a comment, subscribe, I'm sure she'd appreciate it let's see if we can push her up over the 100 subs today, huh? that'd be a nice little, uh, nice little gift for her, wouldn't it, for the weekend? she's currently at 94 as I film this, so she hasn't got far to go to hit 100. Let's see if we can get that done for her. 
If you're here from Naomi's channel or you've stumbled over this film in some other way, hi, hello, welcome. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there was something you liked, even if it was weird blethering from this strange bird here. That being the case, it'd be delighted to welcome you to the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit the subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, my bell. Na, 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 na. and then choose all notifications and then keep saying yes and all of them until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in different ways and then hopefully they'll send you oh I don't know one in four of my films that I actually do speaking of which there are an awful lot of other films you can check out from me right now um, there's all kinds there's, there's all the previous episodes of this pick series um, I've got challenges, I've got product reviews, I've got palette bingos, I've got uh, a Zodiac series that I've just started on my channel. I even read you my favourite poem. So there's bound to be something on here that you'll like. Basically, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge, because what better way to pamper yourself than sitting there listening to me blether on while applying coloured pigments to my face. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.